Oh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Mayor Ted Betancourt, and it's really my pleasure to welcome all of you to Peabody City Hall uh, for a day of remembrance of the Armenian Genocide and to really honor the important contributions the Armenian community has made to, to the city and across the world. Um, we're going to be very brief. I'm just going to say a couple of words, and then we're going to go inside where it's much warmer and we're not in danger of being rained on. I have words that I want to say inside, but let's raise the flag. I'm very proud to have the Armenian flag that will be hanging over City Hall this week. Uh, and then we'll go inside for the ceremony and for some refreshments. So, um, Mrs. Trejan, will you join me and we'll raise the flag together? Trejan family. Good morning. Uh, my name is Edward Betancourt, uh, Mayor of the City, and I'm truly honored to have you here today. Uh, we should have some students filing in shortly, but I want to move forward uh, and not uh, impose upon your time. Um, very proud to be joined today by a number of city officials that I do want to introduce. Uh, first is our Ward 3 Counselor, Jim Mitsoulis. Thank you, Jim, for being here. Our Ward 2, yep. Our Ward 2 Counselor, Peter McGinn. Thank you, Peter. And our school committee member, Andrew Arnotis, who is also here on behalf of our state representative, Tom Walsh. Thank you, Andrew. So this is a very meaningful event uh, for all of us here in the city of Peabody, uh, an event that has been held now for, I believe, the 27th year here in the city of Peabody, and, and something that I'm very proud as mayor to continue the legacy of Mayor Peter Terigian and his family. Um, I remember in high school, and I've spoken about this in the past, but I always think about it on this day. Um, I remember when I was a high school junior and Mayor Terigian came to speak at a seminar at Peabody High School. It was in the auditorium and he spoke about the Armenian Genocide. And as a young student, I didn't really know too much about the Armenian Genocide. Uh, I knew very little, in fact, and as my classmates, we knew very little about the Armenian Genocide. Uh, so it was very educational for us. And to hear his passion and his knowledge and to hear him speak about 
uh, the devastating tragedies of the Armenian people uh, really left an impact on me, really left a mark on me. Uh, I remember it to this day, all of, all of my classmates. I remember uh, the feeling that we had of something so terrible that could happen in the world. Um, and now, with things that happened in, in Toronto very recently, in Parkland, Florida, it just reminds you that the world can um, see such evil so often. And it's times like this that we need to remember, uh, remember those that have suffered, remember the families, and always hold that in, the, in our hearts to make sure that we guard against anything happen, happening like that again. And that's why this program is so important, and that's why it was begun years ago by Mayor Teregian, and that's why it needs to continue. And as, as mayor, I'm very honored to continue this program. I have some remarks that I'm going to make later, and I have a proclamation that I want to read, but before I do that, I wanted to come up, uh, invite up for some prayer, uh, Reverend Kazuyan. Did I say that right? <laughs> Reverend, please. It's not often my last name is pronounced pretty well. You did a good job with that. Um, we're going to offer the prayer service with I'm Father Vaskian from Holy Trinity in Cambridge. With me is the Stepan Baljan from St. Gregory Armenian Church in North Andover. And Father Anthony Tandilian from the St. Vasilios Greek Church here in Peabody. Um, you know, this is the fourth commemoration in a week that we have participated in. I was so happy to see that it continues all around the city of Boston from one coast to the other, LA, Detroit, New York, all around wherever there's a, a city hall, there's a pocket of Armenians, there's going to be a commemoration service and at the State House especially, right, with the George Kaverian started for us. It's been wonderful. Um, that our ancestry continues to be remembered. And so, Mr. Mayor, thank you for continuing this very important tradition for us, but more meaningful, the, um, the meaning behind gathering in prayer in, in voice. So thank you for continuing this. And uh, we look forward to everyone continuing to come. And I would say, on behalf of all of us, if you have a neighbor, bring him or her with you next year. Let our neighborhood, let our people we live near learn who we are and what our prayers are all about. Deacon Armin, would you like to join us? Would you like to join us? We'll start with the Hyde Mid, the Lord's Prayer. Let us rise in prayer. Orthmial dead med Jesus Christos amen. Hyde med vorherginis yes. Sur pirel si arunko. Yeges se arca e chunko. Yeges singamko. Vorbes herginis efegri. Asats mer hana bazor dur mezai sor yev to mez bar dismer vor bes yev mei to merots bar da banats yev mi daniris mezi portuciun ayl prigaz mezi chare zikoy arkay uciun yev zor uciun yev par avidiana samen yev yevus yev yev eshal kian zera uciun gal getso yev vorvia or uciun yev par kor yev vort voy yev okuin serpo ayjem yev misho avidiana savidenits amen. Alleluia, alleluia, peace be to you all. Let us be attentive to hear the Holy Gospel. The Gospel reading is according to St. John. Let us be attentive. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will also come again and will take you to myself, so that there I am, where there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I, I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. For from now on, you do not know him and have seen him. We 
call to you, O holy martyrs, angels with an earthly body, holy advocates and witnesses, you completed your lives in death by the sword. Your commemoration on this rousing feast is like the stream of your flowing blood. O holy ones, may they be holy sacrifice with the Lord so that we may be kept always safe and secure. Christos astvats mer, vasen surp khachiko badvagani skhagutyun ko dur mez. Dur mez der. Christ our God, for the sake of your holy precious cross, Lord, grant us peace. Dur mez Vasen sërpovo asfadaznin, jev hovhanu garabedin, jev sërpojnë në Stepanosin a Khavagain, është khagutyun ko dur mezder. Dur mezder. For the sake of the Holy Mother of God and of John the Forerunner and of Saint Stephen the First Martyr, Lord, grant us peace. Dur mezder. Vasen sërpots kots arakelots, markareits, vartabedats, mardirosats, hajrabedats, gjëknavorats, gusanats, miansans, jev jergnain zoracen, është khaugutjun ko dur mezder. Dur mezder. For the sake of your holy apostles, prophets, teachers, martyrs, heads of churches, Hermits, nuns, solitaries, and the heavenly powers, Lord, grant us peace. Dur mezder. Yev vasen nachkin du savor chatsen merots, tatiosi ev partolimiosi, yev serpots hagopians yerchani garakelotsen, yev serpoin krikori meros du savor chin, yev serpotsen hagopam mutspana hairabedin, Marukei Gjëknavorin, Meridosi Ebiskobosin, Jev Kevorka, Jev Vartana, Kachamar Zorabaracen. Ailev Pare Hosut Jamp, Hishadagab Jev Aotjuk, Sërpocen Nahadagac Abrilian, Vort Gadarecan Hëntacës Hajot Se Gaspanutian, Vasen Havado, Jev Vasen Hajren Jac, Iser Anvanen Kristosi, Vorot Aisor Es Hishadagen Gadarecak, Shagutyun yev zmedzo ormutyun ko barkev yamez martaser der. For the sake of our first enlighteners, the apostles Saint Thaddeus and Bartholomew, and of the blessed apostles Saint James, and of Saint Gregory our illuminator, and of Saint Jacob the bishop of Nisibis, Maruke the hermit, and Miletius the bishop, and George and Vartan the brave captains. Through the intercession, memory, and prayers of the holy martyrs who gave their lives during the Armenian Genocide for their faith and for their homeland, for the name of Jesus Christ, whom we commemorate today, grant us the gift of peace and your great mercy. Let us beseech the Lord through the prayers of the holy martyrs who defeated evil and endured anguish and became worthy of luminous, heavenly, and everlasting crowns. Through their prayers and intercession, may the Lord have mercy on us and raise us to life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Pusagich supports Christos որ բսագես ու սուպս կո եվ արնես ես գամոս հեգյուղացած կոց եվ նայիս սիրով եվ կապսության պարելած ես կո, լուր մեզ հեգնիս է սուպտու նեքում է, պարեխոսության սուրպ ասվադազնին եվ աղջունակամանային � Lur mez der je vohormia, ner ja, kav ja, i tovo zme razmer. A i žanavor ja, ko hut jam palavorel, es gezen horin srpohopuit, 
I am a Michelin Savidinit Amen. Christ our God, you crown your saints with triumph, and you do the will of all who fear you, looking after your creatures with love and kindness. Hear us from your holy and heavenly realm, by the intercession of the Holy Mother of God, and by the prayers of all your saints, especially the holy martyrs who gave their lives during the Armenian Genocide for faith and for the homeland. Hear us, O Lord, and show us your mercy. Forgive, redeem, and pardon our sins. Make us worthy, thankfully, to glorify you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and always, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Thank you. And now it's my honor to uh, ask to come forward to say a few words and to introduce our speaker, uh, Jackie Teregian, who has meant so much to the city of Peabody. Uh, her family has left a wonderful legacy. Um, and I'm, as I said, this will continue for years to come because of their work. Mr. Teregian. Thank you, Mayor Betancourt, and your special staff for hosting this event. The commemoration of the Armenian Genocide was very important to my husband, Peter, and I am extremely grateful that the city continues this tradition. Thank you to Anahid Mataros for helping to organize today's ceremony and providing the delicious Armenian food for our lunch. Our guest speaker today is Abi Kuzunyan. Abby is currently the Sunday School Superintendent and Youth Director of the Holy Trinity Armenian Church in Cambridge. Abby has extensive experience with youth services and has served as a delegate representing the Armenian Orthodox Church on a national level. Please give a warm welcome to Abby Kozunian. Honorable Mayor, Reverend Clergy, and honored guests. Pari Luis, good morning everyone. I want to start by thanking you for the invitation to be your guest speaker this morning and to thank you for honoring us by organizing today's commemoration. Similar commemorations have been taking place around Massachusetts and the country all week, as well as around the world. It is important for us to remember and commemorate our history, not only amongst ourselves, but with our neighbors as well, as it provides hope and inspiration for all those who are present, listening to the stories, prayers, music, and thoughts shared, serving as a collective witness to our history, to our world's history. So I truly thank you for allowing us to do this and to be here as well to share with us this morning. I join you here today to share my thoughts on how we can and how I believe we are preserving our Armenian heritage through our youth. For those of you who don't know me, I am Yeretskin Arpi Kuzuyan. I'm married to Father Vasken Kuzuyan, um, an Ar a priest in the Armenian Apostolic Orthodox Church here in America. I was born and raised in Toronto, Canada, and have spent most of my life working with children, youth, and young adults in the Armenian Church. I am trained in youth, and young, in youth and young adult ministry and have served as National Director of the Department of Youth Ministry for the Diocese of the Armenian Church, as well as Camp Director for our diocesan camp for over a decade. I currently work as the Youth Director and Sunday School Superintendent in my home parish at Holy Trinity Armenian Church in the city of Cambridge. But my roots in youth ministry started long before I met and married my husband and moved to America 24 years ago. Growing up as an Armenian child in Canada, I had the added blessing of being a first-generation Canadian. My sister and I were the first two members of our family born in Canada, all those before us being born in Istanbul, Turkey. I grew up hearing, speaking, reading, writing, socializing, and of course eating Armenian. I went to school seven days a week, regular school Monday to Friday, and then spent each weekend learning and living my Armenian Christian heritage. For 11 years of my life, from the tender age of three, I spent every Saturday in Armenian school, 
where we learned our language, heritage, and religion. And I remain to this day a very proud graduate of St. Sahag and St. Mesrob Armenian School. On Sundays, I was equally busy with church life, which included opportunities for both religious and cultural engagement. My parents, my entire extended family, was entrenched in the church, and my sister and I were no exception. I attended Sunday school, sang in the youth choir, was on the executive of our church's youth group, danced in the Gurung Dance Ensemble, played volleyball with AGBU, and spent every spare moment with my Armenian church friends. My passion for all things Armenian led me to attend retreats and summer conferences in New York. And it was really there, in my early teens, that I got my first hint of how the Armenian church has the power to transform our lives through our faith. At the age of 15, having returned from a retreat in New York, I remember thinking how much I wanted to share my experience with the youth of my own parish, wanting them to also have the opportunities to discuss and explore their faith and learn more about who they are as Armenian Christians. At age 16, I organized the first retreat for our parish, and a year later started a summer camp which still exists today continuing to welcome children and youth as they immerse themselves in their Armenian faith and culture. For me, the Armenian church and Armenian heritage were one and the same, <coughs> deeply intertwined. There was no one without the other. <coughs> Since the beginning, our faith and culture have been firmly interwoven, and this relationship continues today. In, my, in all my experiences working in youth ministry, I have found this connection between our faith and culture never ceasing. It is, in fact, the essence of how to keep our youth connected to their Armenian Christian heritage. Since 301 AD, as the first Christian nation, our faith is what has defined us. We are Armenian Christians in the apostolic Oriental Orthodox faith. And just as our faith and culture are so deeply intertwined, this faith that defines us is deeply intertwined with the darkest period of our history. 103 years ago, our ancestors were martyred, not only because of their language, their successes, or their music, but because of their faith. They were Christians living in a land that refused to accept or even tolerate their difference or their beliefs. When we focus only on the cultural side of our Armenianness, we neglect the most integral part of who we were and who we are. Those who believe that our Armenian heritage is only our customs, traditions, language, music, dance, or food are missing the most fundamental and integral piece of who we are, our faith. And I believe most emphatically that it is only through our faith that we will continue to preserve our greater Armenian heritage. I have, in fact, devoted my life to this belief. Three years ago, a century after the Armenian Genocide, on April 24, 2015, our Armenian nation and diaspora awoke to a new dawn, as those 1.5 million souls massacred during the darkest chapter of the world's history were no longer victims. On April 23, 2015, on the eve of the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide, the Armenian Church canonized the 1.5 million genocide martyrs, now the holy martyrs of the Armenian Genocide. And they became saints, no longer victims, but victors over death. In this canonization, we find a great lesson on how to inspire our young people and help preserve our Armenian heritage, not only for our youth, but for all those of us of Armenian descent. Some of you here today may have family or have friends who have families that were original, original settlers in this area, perhaps tracing their families back to the founding of the city of Peabody and maybe even to the Mayflower. And if so, that is an awesome honor and privilege. As Armenians, it is imperative that we impart to our young people the powerful and awesome reality that many of them can trace their roots back to the saints. This is huge. This is historic and unprecedented. But beyond that, 
It's an undeniable and incredible honor. And we all, both young and old, must each embrace and own this reality, and we must all live up to it as living legacies of our martyred saints. We must recognize, however, that with this incredible honor also comes great responsibility. Our first responsibility is we must know our family history. If we don't already know our family's history, we must learn it, we must understand it, and we must share it with our friends, with our classmates, with our teachers, our coworkers, our neighbors. We should share our stories with the world. The second great responsibility that comes with this honor is in how we live our lives. Working closely with the children, youth, and young adults of my community, I have the privilege and power of helping to direct their paths. As we all know, much of what they know or think, what, much of what they know or they think they know, comes from what they read and see on social media. In my conversations and lessons with our young people, I am constantly reminding them to stop and think before they post something on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or Snapchat. Before they hit that button that will send out that message or photo that will define them to the world, I ask them to think about how their words, images, or actions reflect their family tree. Do they reflect that they are the descendant of a saint? Do they reflect the heart and soul of someone whose ancestors were martyred for their faith? Do their words, posts, tweets, images, or actions reflect that they are a person of, a, of faith and the descendant of someone who died for their faith? The third and final responsibility that comes from having saints in our family tree relates to our transition from victims to victors. On this 103rd anniversary of the Armenian Genocide, after a century of being victims to not only the heinous and oppressive acts of the Ottoman Empire, but also the continual oppression of a world that does not fully acknowledge the atrocities done to our people, we now emerge victorious. Our ancestors died for their faith, but now they live on for eternity as saints. During these past two weeks, we have witnessed the recent unrest, protests, and civil disobedience in Armenia. Understandably, our focus has been pulled away from the heroes and martyrs of our past as we have witnessed the emergence of present-day heroes, raising their voices against a new oppression and injustice. We thank God that in his infinite wisdom, he granted strength and perseverance and clarity and wisdom to those who needed it most in order to overcome this latest injustice and, oppress and oppression. The Armenian Genocide has defined us as a nation and as a people for over 100 years, but we are so much more than just victims of a genocide. In light of recent events, as we celebrate a new dawn in our motherland, our focus must turn away from our oppressive, dark, and painful history toward the uplifting future we have before us, reaffirmed by the recent outcome of the determined and passionate efforts of our young people in Armenia and the diaspora. On this Martyrs Day, as we remember and commemorate our sainted martyrs, we recall that they now shine as victors over the hatred, oppression, and evil that has defined our history for too long. And today, the children of their children continue their victory over oppression. In order to continue to preserve our Armenian heritage and Armenian identity, we must continue to redefine ourselves, not as victims, but as victors. Victors over hatred and oppression. Victors who can worship and celebrate freely our Armenian Christian heritage, passing on that faith to our children and to our children's children. We must celebrate this victory over death by living lives of meaning. Every Sunday, when I enter our beautiful sanctuary in Cambridge, I am, in, I am reminded that we are indeed victorious. We shouldn't be here. If the Ottoman Turks had had their way and had been successful, we wouldn't be here. Every time we enter our churches, 
every time we make the sign of the cross and pray our ancient prayers, every time we speak the language of our ancestors, dance our dances or sing our songs, every time we gather as Armenian Christians, we are victorious. There's a reason we're still here. It is that understanding, that recognition and pride in our, that our young people have that will continue to preserve the Armenian heritage. Our ancestors were massacred because of their race, because of their intellect, their language, their land, and because of their religion. I choose to believe that every time we worship freely as Armenian Christians, it is a reminder that they live on, that our Armenian heritage lives on, and that we are victorious. Well, we must remember that every day we have the opportunity to ensure that our martyrs did not die in vain. Every day, we have the opportunity and responsibility to show our gratitude for their sacrifice by living freely, devoutly, and proudly as honorable members of the faith and heritage for which they were so hated and massacred. Every day, we have the opportunity to live lives of meaning through our thoughts, words, and actions. It is our responsibility as parents and mentors to be an example to our young people by how we live our lives. It is our responsibility to help our young people continue to discover, grow, and thrive in their faith and heritage. As a church, we serve to engage, equip, and empower our young people by providing them with opportunities to learn about their faith and heritage and to imprint on their hearts and minds the story of their past so that they can forge ahead and continue the story of the Armenians as living legacies of our martyred saints, celebrating this victory over death by living lives of meaning. I have dedicated my life to helping our young people learn and grow in their Armenian Christian faith, the faith of our ancestors, the faith of those who sacrificed their lives so many years ago, the faith of the saints of the Armenian Genocide. Our youth today are not the first generation to explore and connect to their faith and heritage. They are merely the most current generation to do so. They are a link in the long chain that stretches from our ancestors in historic Armenia over a century ago to the pews that they sit in today, connecting the past through the present into a hopeful future. As we commemorate our martyred saints, our Armenian martyrs, as we commemorate them today and celebrate their victory over death, we must never forget where we come from and that we are all now descendants of saints. We must never forget our history, their history, or that we are the living legacy of their sacrifice. I humbly pray that our youth will always remember and appreciate the sacrifice of our martyrs and always strive to live lives of meaning that are worthy of being called the descendants of saints. Thank you, everyone. Mrs. Kazuian, thank you so much. Um, your thought-provoking, powerful words, much appreciate them. A little frustrated. Uh, because we had a bus busing issue at the school, and I really would have loved to have heard, had our students hear that. Uh, so I'm a bit frustrated, but life happens, and, um, but thank you. Thank you for those words. The world can certainly be a beautiful place, but it can also be a place of extreme brutality and horror, like history has shown us with the Armenian Genocide. How can we make sense of such evil in the world? The fact is, we cannot. What we can do, however, is pay tribute to the lives of those who were lost and offer care and comfort to the families and loved ones. What we must also do is always remember and speak out about such events so that future generations will be educated about the presence of evil as I was some 30 years ago and be vigilant so that these horrific chapters in our history never happen again. That is why events such as this here in the city of Peabody are so important. I do have a proclamation that I wanted to present to Mrs. Teregian today. And I'm going to read it. It's a little bit lengthy. 
uh, but I wanted to read every word is important. On the 103rd anniversary of the Armenian Genocide of 1915 to 1923, Whereas 1,500,000 people of Armenian ancestry were victims of genocide perpetrated by the government of the Ottoman Empire from 1915 to 1923. And whereas at the outbreak of World War I, the young Turk regime des decided to deport the entire Armenian population of about 1,750,000 to Syria and Mesopotamia. And whereas Talat Pasha, leader of the Young Turk movement, was principal author of the plan to exterminate the Armenians. And whereas the plan of genocide consisted of deporting all Armenians out of, what, of whatever age or condition of health to the totally barren region of what is now Syria. And whereas the Armenians were deported to that region on foot, a death march in which more than one million died of starvation or were killed. And whereas Armenians were rounded up and brutally driven from their homes and their land, separated from families, robbed of everything they owned, and stripped of all they carried with them. And whereas thousands of Christian Armenians were tortured and murdered for refusing to accept Islam, Islam as their religion. And whereas the atrocities afflicted on Armenians held in concentration camps and on the death marches to the Syrian desert resembled those of the Holocaust of World War II. And whereas the massacre of Armenians who escaped deportation and remained in Turkey was called the most colossal crime of all ages by the examining American military missions report to the United States Congress. And whereas in a telegram sent by the United States Ambassador Henry Morgenthau to the Secretary of State, Morgenthau warn, warned that a campaign of race extermination is in progress under a pretext of reprisal against rebellion. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Edward A. Betancourt Jr., Mayor of the City of Peabody, Proclaim today as a day of remembrance on the, of the 103rd anniversary of the Armenian Genocide of 1915 to 1923. And be it further resolved that the people of the city of Peabody observe today by remembering the 1.5 million people of Armenian ancestry who lost their lives in the genocide of 1915. This is Tariq I present this to you. Even reading those words, which I do uh, every year, it's, it's always very difficult to, to read that. Um, I want to take a moment to, to recognize the important contributions that the Armenian community has made to the city of Peabody. From elected officials, and I think of Mayor Tarijian, I think of Michael Garabedian, uh, public safety officials, teachers, I think of Doc Peretzi, and one of my all-time favorite teachers, uh, business leaders in our community who have meant so much to the city. The Armenian community has meant a great deal and will continue to mean a great deal and has built this city that I'm so proud to be mayor of, and I want to thank all of you for that. We have some refreshments uh, here, so please um, stay and enjoy yourselves. I want to thank Mrs. Tarigi and her family. I want to thank from City Hall, Mary Bellavance, our staff, Cookie, who put together the hall for us. I want to thank uh, the Mataros family for the refreshments today, um, so important to our community. And again, thank you all for being here and sharing in this. And again, I wish our students were here, and uh, I apologize for that. Uh, but in closing, I want to say that I'm very proud to have the, the Armenian flag hanging over the city of Peabody. So thank you.